Well, welcome back. All right, uh, we are going to be talking a lot of numbers today and some very important figures. For that, we are going over to Mike Apple, standing by uh, via Skype. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning. How are you? Ah, oh, doing okay, doing okay. But 8:30. This is the time that we are circling right now when it comes to the job numbers, and this could be stark. The projections for the March data, Melanie, are all over the map. On the <laughs> best case scenario. The economists are forecasting 150,000 jobs lost. That's probably going to be uh, much below where the numbers actually are. We've heard forecasts as high as 1.1 million. And it's going to be interesting as well because Stats Canada is actually tweaking their compilation technology or techniques. A typical unemployment report would only encapsulate about the first two or three weeks of any given month. Well, because this month's uh, jobs data uh, falls a little bit later than it typically would in the second week of April in this case, uh, they've had more time to really capture how many Canadians have lost work in the past monthly data. So it's going to be a stark reminder of exactly uh, you know the, 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 the hit that the economy has taken from the pandemic, the unemployment rate expected to go from five and a half percent all the way north of eight percent could even be worse than that. So it, it's it's going to be a real indication of how much of a of a hit the economy has taken. And don't forget, we'll also get the U.S. weekly jobless claims this morning. And over the previous two weeks, those have uh, uh, tallied more than nine million Americans filing for unemployment claims for the first time ever. So these numbers that we will get are going to be uh, very dramatic, to say the least. Oh, it's pretty incredible, Mike. So we hope to, yeah. again, get that at about 8.30. Uh, if we've got mm -hmm. time, we'll try to bring you back for some more commentary yeah. on what we see there. Meantime, let's talk about WestJet. Uh, some encouraging yes. news uh, when it comes to rehiring, but this is with the help of the federal subsidy, of course. That's right. The, the federal government picking up 75% uh, of uh, employees' wages for any company that has seen a 30% or more decline. And it's actually, they're still kind of tweaking the numbers a little bit. But as, as the CEO of WestJet said uh, last night in a uh, uh, conference call, for lack of a better description, uh, Ed Sims says, these people aren't going to be working per se. They're just going to be back on the payrolls because WestJet and its competitor, Air Canada, they've grounded most of their, all of their international flights and most of their domestic service. So Air Canada's rehiring 16,500 under that uh, wage subsidy program as well. But, uh, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't solve the problem, no. for, for lack of a better description. But uh, nevertheless, at least people are, are going to be paid their salaries. So we can, you know, sort of take solace from that, I, I suppose, in the short term. Indeed, and they can uh, rely on some of their benefits as well during yeah. this uncertain right. time, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, OPEC, eyes on OPEC. Well, the Russians are saying they're going to cut production. Will the Saudis follow the lead? And will we see, you know, the, the best case scenario where they're, they're talking about a 10 million barrel per day uh, cutback, which would be the largest on record. Can they agree? They'll be holding a conference call today. And there is some talk, and it hasn't been confirmed yet, though, that uh, Canadian and U.S. producers might even be involved. And typically, that's not the case. It's OPEC sort of a standalone entity. It is a cartel, so it sort of runs afoul of uh, some of the U.S. rules and regulations about such things. But uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, uncertain times, certainly, and historic times where the price for oil is certainly cratered. It is up this morning by 7%, still well below its recent peaks, but uh, a little bit of cautious optimism that uh, we may see some movement in the energy trade. And, and that would certainly be good for the Canadian producers, which have just been crushed under the weight of all of this. Indeed, Mike. All right. Thank you so much for that. And uh, you have yourself a great day. We'll try to check in with you a little bit later on all in right. the show.